Yeah. Um, I'm Brandon. That's Gary. I'm not Patrick. Thanks. I'm already getting heckled from the, from, from the real big pockets. Do you want us to use the microphone, Kim? Sorry. <laughs> um, once again, Gary's from the Open University. I'm uh, at MIT. I've uh, been working in the open education for quite a while. It's a pleasure to actually be here, not actually organizing the conference, as Seth will attest to in the back also. Um, we're going to talk today about a project that's been funded uh, by the Next Generation Learning Challenges at, um, from EDUCAUSE, primarily the funding from the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The Next Gen Learning Challenges is uh, a grant program that's sort of built around thinking a little bit differently and trying to bring to action some of the things that have been going on in open education, primarily around content and moving from content into courses and practice and to delivering um, actual classes with actual students meeting actual needs. And we'll talk a little bit about the approach we're taking with this project that's built a lot on the open university models and um, give you a series of areas in which we think some of the things that we're doing are a little bit different than um, traditional approaches, certainly the approaches that the rest of my organization has taken with open education, um, and lead into a set of broader issues for the open education community, and we can talk about how the projects we're working on start to address some of them, how some of the other projects that are in the room, um, the person I've been getting, who's been giving me a hard time from the back, Kim Thanos, is also doing a project, leading a project funded by the same um, grant program focused also on developmental math and nine or ten or eleven other areas. <laughs> so Bridge to Success, it's, um, this is a screenshot of our website, it's b2s.aacc.edu. We actually have some handouts and flyers and collateral uh, to, to uh, if you're interested. One of the questions I was supposed to ask is, is anybody here from a community college or interested in using this from a community college? Okay, great. Gary's going to want to talk to you. Actually, he's going to want to push you in contact with some folks to um, see if you're interested in adopting some of the materials. Um, there are two courses that we've brought up online, uh, or portions of two courses, that are built around uh, materials that have existed and worked well within the Open University setting in the United Kingdom. And we're bringing those to different audience, and all sorts of issues are, arise around that. And those are the kinds of things we'll be talking about. Um, one of them is called Succeed with Math. Um, this one's partially launched. The full launch will be in January of this year. Um, it's basically a developmental math course, but it's, it's not a developmental math course the way I've seen some of the other ones that have been um, taught here within the United States. Um, my good friend Tom in the other room is talking about his launch of 42 open courses. Um, looking at some of the, the materials that they've developed versus the kinds of things that has worked very well in the Open University's experience, it's a pretty big gap. So you start with the developmental map, perhaps with basically equations of op equations and lots of practice. And, and that's kind of been a, one of the approaches that's been taken. But what Gary will talk about with the Open University approach is it's, it's a much softer introduction and it's a lot more supportive. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that attracted the consortium the folks working on this project to this. So it's the Open University, Anne Arundel Community <coughs> College, and the University of Maryland University College. Folks that have been doing online and distance education for a very long time. And they've got lots of experience with it, but they know that they can improve. And some of the things that the Open University has done, the approaches they've taken, are very different than what we do here in the United States. One of those is based around, is learning to learn. It's um, it's an openings course is the phrase at the Open University. Um, it, um, it's a general introduction to, to the transition between, um, say, high school and college, between the workforce coming back and starting to take colleges, uh, college courses, and um, we have an educator here, um, Shelley Hintz, who's, who's been working using these courses with actual students. And if all works well, She'll say a couple Trying things. to learn a course can really just kind of go over to them different skills that they need to be successful in a college level class 
it goes over, um, there's modules on reading techniques, um, study skills, time management. All of those issues are issues that they're going to be dealing with once they're inside the classroom. And so I think just going through those materials and becoming more confident in being a learner and understanding their own learning needs. And as they can understand their own learning needs, so. So she talks a little bit about the motivation of what's different. And if you take MIT out of the equation, but look at some of the other universities where it work, Utah State or UC Berkeley, we don't do those things ever in our classes. Um, there's some bridge programs in the first to transition between high school and college, but that's it. It's over after that. It's not something that's kind of an ongoing thing. But, but that's one of the things that, that's different about the Open University approach and the support and the tutor system that they use. Um, and so I had to do this with, with um, Gary was, was kind enough to, 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 to let me do the, the Americanism of minding the gap. And what we're doing is a lot of different gaps and with the project, which are, are very representative of a lot of the issues facing people trying to take open content and use them as courses. Um, content and materials developed by others, how do you wrap actual course experiences around them. So at the Open University, UMUC, AACC, they teach classes online, but they don't necessarily do things openly. And so where, where, where does that gap come and how do you bridge across it? Also, um, research and practice. We know lots of things about educational research and educational theory. How do we um, take what's worked in one setting and then transfer it to another setting? Um, differences between the UK and the US, and Gary's got a couple of great examples around this. Um, and then also the Open University approach versus the American Community College approach. There's some similarities in the types of students, but as Gary will explain, there, there are lots of things that are different that we've had to kind of work through and work around. And finally, the, the issue of developmental math, a, a bridging between high school and college with preparation levels, between being out in the workforce, coming back, and and starting a degree program or trying to complete a degree program. And now I'm going to turn it over to Gary. So that's me. Um, so I think really from our point of view, from, from, from your point of view, it's about kind of um, giving you the experience that we're having to go through as we deliver this course or make this transition from using our OER material and delivering it in a different context. So with that in mind, um, you know, I think there's something pretty unique about the way in which the Open University goes about developing these courses. Um, the way in which you know, we have a, a group of academics that come together and that we, you know, we center all of that in relation to the student experience. So there's a whole, oh, I shan't, well, it's quite interesting actually. I was going to say bore you, but it's quite interesting. But um, you know, there's a whole quality assurance and quality enhancement function that actually it's built into that process that we go through when we build a course. And with that <coughs> taken into account, you know, the whole ethos around the way in which our courses are delivered into students, particularly these opening students as we call them in the UK, it's much softer. It's a much gentler kind of start. They don't they won't see a maths equation for for a, you know a good few weeks. It'll be talking about the experience of being a student and what it's like to use maths in everyday life and so on and so forth. So, you know, we won't confront them immediately with a test. So it's because they already have an anxiety about maths. So we're going to give you a test and we're going to heighten that anxiety. So we, you know, it's a completely different kind of process that we go through and a different kind of studying experience that the, the Open University students would have. And alongside that, there's a whole set of scaffolding that kind of goes along that, the supportive the scaffolding but you know, that's there for the students um, in terms of the way the tuition function and um, the way in which we, you know, the forums, the student forums, so on and so forth. So, and those, those aspects were particularly, I think, uh, attractive to the community college environment. So, I think that kind of leads us nicely onto the courses. Um, so, in a sense, we've, We've delivered the course yet. Um, we've <laughs> delivered courses, and um, you know we've had to go through that process, um, which is a process which I think is of interest. Um, of you know how do we make that material, our material, contextually kind of right for your students, and you know some of it's dealing with you know, some language kind of issues and so on. So, so and that process cuts across 
all different aspects of the delivery, I guess, the production of, of the OER material. So we've had to find some academic uh, faculty members to take part in that process with us, for us. Um, and, you know, there's, there's different kind of viewpoints depending on the individual we've asked, depending on the community college that they're working on, in, as to how they go about making those changes or feel they need to make those changes. So there's a whole learning experience for everybody who's been involved in this project and taking some OER material and delivering it into you know, a different context. So yeah. taking ostensibly complete OER. Complete, complete courses, yeah. Um, and moving them, so these courses were paper-based courses, so we've moved them into an online environment as well. So, you know, with that in, in sense, it's the same. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. But you know, some community colleges are choosing to slice that material up, to deliver it in a piecemeal kind of way to their students, um, and not not give it to them as a as a whole thing. And I think that's that's true of AACC. Now, other other community colleges are mixing it, mixing it with other other courses that they're doing. They're already doing maths anxiety courses, so they're using this to kind of supplement, to bulk out the kind of material, to provide a different kind of um, you know, experience for the students. Um, you know, so, and that, in a sense, kind of leads us into a lovely piece of British uh, um, But What that means is that there are so many aspects associated with the way in which we're having to change this material, interact, and we're wanting to learn all these experiences. So the research, because this is a funded research project um, that's actually delivering things into students. So what we're trying to do here is that because of the way in which the community colleges are using the material, you know, we've had to adapt the way in which we're undertaking the research to capture the experience of that student or that faculty member in going through this process so that we can take all that back, put it into something, I haven't mentioned anything about Olnet, which is another kind of project and the evidence of where we're going to be putting all this, this evidence back in about the way in which we're going through this reversioning kind of process. So there's all sorts of aspects where things are cutting across, lining up, in terms of the way having to consider. Um, one of the greatest challenges we've had with the project <coughs> is actually the way in which the Open user, University actually produces it. So making, um, putting the material through the, through I call it the, the OU sausage meal, really. Uh, in so much that we're taking it from print, putting it into something called lab space, the technical kind of difficulties we have in doing that, and we're wanting to share those or give those skills to the community colleges. And we found some difficulties with that because we've been hamstrung by the way in which the only open university has its systems and the way in which it does it. So it doesn't lend itself readily for other people to go in there and make those changes themselves, so take the material and actually do it themselves. We've had to do quite a bit of that reversioning for them. Um, but we are dealing with those barriers those gaps in that kind of sense. Um, and we are delivering that training in so these community colleges can take material and can make the changes themselves. Um, I think we're switching back over to, um, <coughs> to you in relation to the evidence. Uh, but all of that research that we're doing, we're capturing through this whole process, the process of managing the project, the process of um, reversioning the academic faculty, as I said, um, their thoughts on the way in which they are having to be asked to be using this material in different ways, in different contexts to perhaps they feel comfortable with. Um, the actual people producing the material, everybody is taking part in this kind of research so we can put it into something called the Evidence Hub. I don't know how many people know anything about it. Has anybody heard of the Evidence Hub? Know what it is? Most people in this room have heard about the Evidence Hub in their possession. Would you like to say a little bit more about their part? No, I'm, 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 I'm,
having some not, not only a demo but also a hands-on session so that you can understand. It's maybe a website where uh, you can go and share your knowledge about OER, knowledge in terms of challenges, claims, but also project resources available and specific interests. So then come tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was much better than I could have done. Um, it looks like we've designed this so that you can't read it either. Um, <laughs> so the evidence has been collected, this, this evidence of the effect of this and, and many issues with respect to health and education. What you can't really read on the screen are some highlighted issues, the ones that the project's been focusing on and looking at. And Gary did a very lovely job of very little color. Um, of highlighting the issues and the things that we were working on. And the way we started to approach this presentation was, let's tell you a little bit about what we're doing, um, but let's also just talk about some of the issues involved with taking existing courses and taking them trans and trying to take existing content and trying to teach courses around them. Um, we're looking at localizing. So you would think it might be easy that maybe all we have to do is switch some of the spellings around switch um, some of the, the, the units around from pounds to dollars. Um, but as, as Gary's shaking his head, it's been a lot more challenging than that. And at this point, we were just going to open things up for questions from the audience and, and find out what are the things that we can answer from our experiences um, that address some of the questions you have with taking material developed by others, localizing it, um, using it, and, and looking at other ways and providing support around it. Um, Gary and I can talk about some of the uh, support resources that are in place, uh, some of the, the things that the community colleges have already done and that are, are doing now. Um, so we'll go ahead and just open it up for questions. So I'm Margaret Corset from Western Governors University, and we use Babylonian math <laughs> and um, from the open, yeah. And so um, I would say that the it, it can work if it's not translated, let's say, if it's not the primary resource. If it's a supplementary resource that supports other other resources, then you know you get over it. I mean then you're not you're not testing to the to what's in that content necessarily. It's just a good support, you know, to to build in our model the confidence, you know, for our students. Yeah. And that's something we've experienced. So we've got a, a particular faculty member at ASCC who thinks the material needs reworking quite a lot right. and you know we're happy to kind of let them get on with that because from our point of view that's something we want to kind of evaluate mm -hmm. um, and then we've got other, another person from UMEC um, I mean yes um, and she's just just in the same I'm, I'm happy with it as it is I can work around with you know talking about a trip from London to Liverpool or whatever kind of English kind of bits that are in there, I can you know I can deal with that in, in the way in which I'm, I'm putting that forward. So you know, and that's another. So we've got different kind of evaluation routes for those individuals. But how do you work that if they if let's say the one example where they do modify the content to yep. be more Americanized, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Um, is that I mean is that then open for others as well then? I mean, yep. how does that work with the model? So um, so the way in which we're going through the, the this reversioning process. You know, it's actually been sliced off in terms of its reversioning. People have kind of bagged kind of bits and said, oh this bit, you know, I really like, this bit kind of fits with our community college, so I'll reversion this bit, thank you very much. Okay, well I'll do this bit and I'll do that bit. So actually there's differing kind of activities going on as we, we push this material out to the to the community colleges. But then you know once it's finished, you know it's there, it's there for you to be used today. You know, we've got 33 community colleges kind of signed up and wanted to use it. It's there in lab space, and if you wanted to, if you could get your, your head around the technical <laughs> difficulties, you could go into lab space and, and make your own course out of that, as well as. So as part of that, we're building a lot on the infrastructure that the Open University has already provided to the world at large. That they, they use internally, and they provide it to the world at large, the lab space, where you can make a copy of a course, use it to, to deliver the course, you can make modifications to it. Um, and as Gary's mentioning, there, there's some technical issues we're still trying to work around, moving from 
um, the Open University, which is had, it's a very nice production process. The sausage factory is very. <laughs> it's a very nice room, enormous room, with lots of people working on developing curriculum and content and assessments and doing feedback loops of, of testing with students and, and understanding where things are working and things aren't working. But that's a process the Open University has been using for 40 years now. Um, but that's a process that's foreign to most faculty at most universities and colleges in the United States. But, so it's part of the experiment then of what happens when we make that available. And some of the examples Gary's been giving, um, some of the redesign that's gone on sort of to the base course have, has, have been by, by some faculty that have a very particular way of teaching things. And they, they're taking all of this material and in the reworking it, try, have started to make it their own material. Sort of, a, it's, you'd probably say a little too far that it then becomes that much harder for somebody else to take and, and do that. But that's one of the lessons. Sort of, it's a known lesson, but it's, it's important for everybody involved because what we're doing is uh, faculty development, professional development with faculty. The back. So you talked about the um, curriculum development and assessment, student assessment in this sausage factory. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit more about um, what you've measured um, in the UK and uh, and how that's come into feedback? Yeah, so I mean, we have a whole quality assurance kind of loop that we, so. What are your metrics, So, I guess I'm trying to compare them to what we have here in terms of, you know, uh, degree completion, student retention. Right, so off the top of my head, I don't know, but I'm happy to kind of, you know, take something from you and get back to you because I mean the OU is um, because it's completely open you don't have to come with any kind of pre pre qualifications in any kind of sense so our retention figures in some kind of way and I'm sure people will kind of not want me to kind of say this but you know they don't really stack up to people who kind of say well actually if you come in with four A levels of grade A plus and so on and so forth you know so we have a completely different kind of student demographic yeah so student come in um, yeah, for sure. And it's, it's students taking, or, or individuals wanting to take a single class, or individuals wanting to do a degree program. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I think a lot of that does, my reception is a lot of that exists here, but a lot of the focus is, is certainly with, with the recent funding, is how do you take the folks that do want that degree and how do you <coughs> make sure they can, they can complete yeah. in a reasonable amount of time. Right. And the piece we're looking at is, can you help with the preparation piece, which then kind of uh, so works its way through? Then at UK, it focuses more on the student completion of an individual course. So we, so students, so, yeah, so students kind of can sign up for, for programs. So whilst they're doing individual project uh, courses, they they stack up into a, a program qualification. The university is more moving more towards a, a program kind of delivery. So students actually make a commitment to sign up to a program. That's something that's kind of coming in due to the funding changes that we've had in the UK. Um, so, so presumably your funder at the end has something to look at, right? Absolutely. <coughs> absolutely. always want some results. Yeah, right? absolutely. Well, and it's about, you know, it's about the students, isn't it? So the students are wanting to achieve, you know, their goals, their success, success goals, whatever they might be on an individual mm -hmm. basis. And, you know, that's, that's what's important, the retention and student kind of success. And everything that we do, in, well, in terms of, you know, the students sitting right in the middle, you know, of everything that we do, so that we, you know, we are developing those courses around. So we do an awful lot of developmental testing, students in, taking their quality, and we, it's all going back in. It's all feeding back through all the time. But the, the metrics, the metrics, it sounds like are evolving yeah. in terms of what program outcomes you're looking for. Yeah. I'm not best placed to talk about that. But there are people in your unit. There are absolutely folks. There's a whole unit that just oh, okay. does that. All right. Okay, great. Well, I'll, yeah. I'll follow up. Yeah. Kim. So as, as you think about, I, I have an assumption that you're working with a small group of partners right now as far as this grant process, that this is kind of proving a model that you would expand and bring in other, other like the community college partners. Is, is that the case? Yes. So when you think about the the variability that comes into this. You know, if I'm a faculty member who's requiring significant customization and another faculty member is using something that is much more out of the box in terms of what you provide, yep. does that 
does that impact your scaling over time? Does it need to move more in one direction or the other in terms of it being uh, being more broadly adoptable? Or is that something that you can imagine that degree of variability continuing at scale? So I, I think that the, some of the challenges that we're, we're perhaps encountering with this project, you know, uh, that we are tackling, I think that it, it allows for that scalability because you know we've got we've got a we've got the original, <laughs> the original is there and it's open and available and people can take it and they can use it now and do whatever they kind of want with it. So it's there and available. So the bits, in some sense, we need to kind of crack is kind of make it more accessible in terms of being able to kind of make the changes that you need, personalization in some kind of way. Perhaps making the other versions, the versions that perhaps fit best with your community college available. So, you know, I kind of see it as, as scalable. No, but it's, it's a good question. I mean, you know, we, we're running a marathon to get to where we're at right now. Right. Um, and we have the tools that enable us to do all of that, but we frankly haven't had the time to think, really think through how do you do any support multiple versions. The initial intent was there was going to be a kind of master class from which people would be able to take and modify or use as is. I think the um, we, we sort of got hit a lot sooner than maybe we were expecting but with the variability factor and that's caused us to have to, to do lots of different things which goes back to the tartan plaid thing um, of the interweaving and, and, and I'm, changing up how we're doing the evaluation and assessments, and then also providing materials back out to uh, prospective adopters of the material. So the original goal was to provide a set of three courses that you could take and use as is. And, and with assessments and the ability to, to, to track that over time. That's really what NGLC wanted us to do. Um, great theory, not necessarily as great in practice, and I think we're still trying to work through where that is. So you're in a place now where it would almost look more like you have kind of the initial courses and then a few different flavors of those yep. courses. It yep. really started from that core. Yep. Right. Yep. And what's probably still unknown are those flavors, you know, your is there vanilla a chocolate strawberry right. that are going to yeah. cover most of the institutions right. yeah. or is this, is this going to just proliferate what you just So, uh, uh, you know, that'll be, you know, that'll come out of the evaluation. You know, we've got, we've got, as I said, we've got 33 community colleges kind of interested. Um, you know, we've got the vanilla version which is there already. We're just about to have the, whatever, raspberry ripple kind of version. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, and then that, that might lead on to, to other things. You know, I think one of the, one of the key things is that, the, you know, the, learn, the, the first course, Learning to Learn, that was quite unproblematic in the way in which it kind of was converted from the openings course into the, the one for the, for the Bridge to Success. Obviously the maths course, because it's moved online as well. So we've had a whole heap of kind of challenges there about um, maths formula and maths and X, math and L, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, that's they're some of the issues that we, you know, we are we are dealing with, and I think we're, we're dealing with them. Yep. Yeah. I have a sense that we're out of time, which is Just about that great. Two minutes. Um, yeah. One minute. One, One more question, perhaps? You mentioned technical difficulties. Could you give us a couple examples of the kinds of problems you're overcoming? If only Guy was here. Um, so I think from our point of view, you know, the OU has got a, a very, you know, we have our own XML schema which does, you know, which is, enables us to kind of spit all sorts of different kind of versions out. Now, you can't get at that, you know, um, if you're not inside the OU. Now that's something, one of the reasons I guess for taking it on, that's one of the reasons why that group will, wanted to be involved in, in this, this bid from an OU point of view, because we need to crack that nut, you know, we can't always be the per people that they turn to in order to kind of do that, that manual kind of work, and you know, we're, we're dealing with that XML editing kind of issue by reviewing, not that I'm not tech, I'm tech, so can't so Oxygen XML Editor is something that we've been looking at at the OU and something that we have been using as a, a version for using on this particular transition for the maths course. So that's something we have undertaken some training at the community colleges using that XML Editor in order to make those transformations so they can actually do it in-house. Uh,
Okay, can I think we'll call it there? Thank you very much. Thank you very much.